to this welcome back to the manual aerial tuner qrp tuner and uh, what i've done i've attached the sticky label to the front but i've trimmed it down because um, most people assemble all the components on the back inside and i'm going to do it on the front for my design uh, ease for me to have all the components on there and just have the wires running to the sockets which are mounted there but I just sort of go over now a lot of people have said that if they drill the holes it doesn't align with the, where the screws go on the capacitors I've not found that issue and uh, I think it's to do when they print the label if it's not one to one off the scale of the computer screen then the holes will be off but these are actually spot on on this one I'm doing you can see there uh, one thing I have found to drill the holes I find it easier to use wood drills you know that have a, a spike in the middle so you can get exactly in the center of these so that's what I did I use a, a wood drill with a spike on the end uh, right, I've got to put some wires onto the capacitors and I'll do that in a minute so I've got some wires on and then um, I'll put the capacitors in and then I'll talk about the switch the switch here I'm going to do mine slightly different to everybody else and I'll tell you why a bit later on in the video now then I've actually soldered wires across I don't know if you can see the two outer connectors of the capacitors have to be soldered together like that joined can you see it and I also found the washers that were supplied in the kit to go under these screws these were too big they're too big supplied in the kit there's four of them I assume they're for putting under here but they were too big so I found some smaller ones now then the bits you've cut off the extra bits of the um, capacitors these bits here keep them because you need to reinforce this switch and what I mean by that let me just make sure that switch is in the right place this front black bit and the white bit of the switch are just pressed together with these little lugs you can see this little lug there um, with the weight of the coil sitting on the back I'll show you I've done the coil can cause the two halves to separate and all the switch falls apart so I suggest you keep these bits and what I'm going to do I'm going to put some pieces of super glue around it and glue these bits of metal so that the case doesn't separate from the front to the back and that's a fairly easy thing to do um, with the other super glue and these metal bits I couldn't find anything else and as they're there I might as well use them so what I think to this kit so far well a couple of the problems people had with the holes I've not found at all uh, winding the coil is a bit of an art form and I decided to do it this way because the wires these enamel copper wires are so stiff to go on the switch I decided to go with doing it this method uh, would I do one again no to be honest it's not been easy tricky fiddly time consuming but mainly the coil the coil to, to wind this coil with all the taps oh god it's a blooming nightmare if you look closely at the construction you can see just there there's that piece of metal I've glued on super glued on the side of the switch and I'll go over the winding the way I wound this 
because it's quite a bit different to what uh, other people have done. Right, carrying on, I'm going to talk about the coil. And this is the coil I wound. But first of all, I'm going to go over a couple of things. And it's to do with the circuit diagram. The circuit diagram of the winding can be a bit confusing. On some drawings, it shows an earth on the bottom of the winding. It doesn't have one. There's no earth here at the bottom. The only earth that for the winding is the one on the centre of the switch connection which switches between all of these. The top there's from pin one of the switch there's one turn that goes from the pin of the switch to the centre of the capacitors. It goes through the ferrite to one of the capacitors. There. And this is the ordering I used for winding the coil to mount it this way. So when it's mounted this way, clockwise increases the inductance, but obviously lowers the frequency when you're turning the knob. Okay. So between, this is the switch numbering, between one and two pins on the switch, it has two turns between pin 2 and pin 3 it has two turns between pin 3 and 4 two turns between 4 and 5 it's four turns between 5 and 6 it's two turns between 6 and 7 three turns 7 and 8 3 turns pin 8 to 9 2 turns pin 9 to 10 3 turns pin 10 to 11 2 turns and finally pin 11 on the switch to pin 12 10 turns now doing it this order means when it's in the position A on the switch it means there's just that one turn. When you switch it to number 2 or B that's putting two turns in plus the one that goes to the um, capacitors. Now if this coil was turned up the other way obviously the rotation would be different so I've set it up in this order so that the minimum inductance is in A and as you rotate it all the way around to position L that's the maximum inductance the lowest frequencies fairly straightforward but as I say this is what I've done is where the wires get wrapped round and twisted I've put them on the top rather than facing the switch and run wires down to the switch because it puts less strain on the switch and it's easy to get it in a nice position if you have this too deep in the case it will hit the bottom of the case So that's where I am at present time. I hope that makes sense. And what I'm going to do with mine is on the final output on the circuit diagram, I'm going to have a 49 to 1 ballon with another switch. But at the moment, I'm just putting 
the wires on now. Uh, the capacitors are connected to the coil. Um, it's just I've got to get into the base, the sockets now, in here, and drill the case off to suit. And um, I don't think I've got enough sockets to complete the project at the moment. I've started drilling the case. So what we've got is 50 ohm outlet, counterpoisal ground, and fed half wave connection. So I've got the earth in there. there. And I've not done any more here yet. And I've got to get a socket for the input and then mount the um, sensing board somewhere. It's coming on. 